We're also helping people with what we're calling AI powered search. So that is taking additional things into consideration when you perform a search. So you may search for a picture of like a cat and a dog, but let's say you want to get more specific. You want a picture of a cat and a dog that is predicted to perform well for, let's say a social media campaign that's going to be targeted to a tech enthusiast or a CPG type audience. This is what your actual goal is. You want to drive clicks, you want to drive conversions, you want to drive awareness. So it's about surfacing assets that make sense based on your goals and objectives. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here with Michael Francello, who is the Director of Innovation at Shutterstock. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hi, how's it going, Andy? Nice to be here. Great. I'm very excited for our conversation here. Yeah, tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do at Shutterstock. Yeah, totally. Thank you. So I am a director of innovation. And once again, my name is Michael Francello. Most people call me Francello by my last name. So you can feel free to, listeners can as well. Um, basically what I do is I, I look at how we at Shutterstock can use data, technology, and build applications on top of that to help our clients, I guess, create with confidence uh, in a future that is rapidly changing because of, you know, secular trends in the marketplace. People are consuming more content than ever before. We have the advent of AI. We now have Shutterstock AI, which is a subsidiary of a company I spend a lot of time in. And, uh, you know, time is kind of split between talking to clients, understanding their needs, their desires, what they need to be successful in the future, and then also working internally to make sure I transmit that back and, uh, you know, really work with the product team to bring some of these desired technologies, applications, data streams to fruition. It's such an exciting place and time in the market right now for exactly what you do. You're sort of at the nexus of all of this. Tell me a little bit about how you prioritize all these requests. And, you know, I'm sure you have so many different competing requests and you only have so many resources. What's your process for saying, you know, here's where we're going to focus. And these are the top five, top three things that we're going to focus on for a period of time. Yeah, it, it's a good, um, it's it's a great question. I'm kind of a one man show on the innovation side over here, meaning like how I kind of ride the line between business contacts and, uh, you know, relaying information internally. Me personally, what I do is I kind of, I, I have um, quarterly focuses, monthly focuses, and then weekly focuses. And those shift according to, let's say, a launch that's coming up, trainings we have to do internally, conversations that you know, sometimes take precedent over other, other things I'm talking about. Like for a while, I was really talking about how we're building uh, tools to address kind of A-B testing, mitigate that, the cold star problem, how we give people predictive creative intelligence to let them know, you know, which visuals actually drive performance for their campaigns. Um, that got put on the back burner recently because of our generative launch with our new uh, AI image generation tool that was launched in partnership with OpenAI's Dolly 2 application. So the the pivots and the shifts are more frequent now, but I try to stick to that. Okay, these are my quarterly goals. These are my monthly goals. These are my weekly goals. Even sometimes I'll do a daily goals and it just kind of shifts according to how the conversation is going. Very exciting. And, and you mentioned the generative AI. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing with generative AI and, and uh, and how it helps your customers? Yeah, it, it, it's a great question. Um, it's we're, we're approaching this a little bit differently than other people in the marketplace. Uh, I, I think in our pre-call, you know, we had discussed our contributors fund. So our core theme for generative and really for Shutterstock in 2023, with the, the you know the advent of AI, is responsibility. So it's about doing things in a responsible and ethical and also an artist centric way, because it, for anyone who doesn't know Shutterstock, we're known as a, we're a global content provider. So we're built on a foundation of stock images, vectors, illustrations, 3D models, um, videos, music files, and therefore the contributors are the photographers who bring those into our marketplace to monetize. So when we start using generative AI, a lot of companies went out there and they just scraped data or they took data sets or they took in a little intellectual property that didn't belong to them. What we did is we set up a contributors fund. So what we did is we licensed our content to people like OpenAI, 
to companies like LG, like Meta, which we just announced a couple of weeks ago. We licensed this content to them to help them train their models in an artist-centric and once again, an ethical way. So we are only putting Shutterstock images into that model to help train it that we know we have ownership and access to because they're part of our um, our platform where people monetize their their assets, their photographs, et cetera. So we we can we compensate contributors in two different ways. So anyone who is part of the original data set that goes into training an AI model. So in this case, the data would be images, the keywords, the descriptions, as well as anytime somebody licenses generative content or a generated image from our platform, we pay a royalty to our contributors fund. So the contributors are getting compensated in two different ways there. Um, so, so I'd say that's the main difference of our approach. Another difference is that, you know, we're kind of a one-stop creative and content creation shop, right? You can store, manage, access all of your Shutterstock assets as well. In some cases, non-Shutterstock assets, if you want to bring those into our, uh, our catalog environment, which is like a damn light tool. Um, so we give people the ability to do that. And then you're able to generate as well now. So what we see it as really you know, maybe it's oversimplifying it, but it's just another tool that creators, designers, anyone who uses Shutterstock can use to spend less time searching and more time actually creating. Love that whole approach. And it's so great that you're you're aligned with the uh, creators themselves. There's been a lot of talk about how uh, various companies are using IP from others to be able to create their own AI and, and generated content. And that's, that's all a very uh, confusing space right now. So yeah. Choosing, choosing to stay on that side of the uh, of, of the business model and having a business model to compensate artists is really compelling. Um, way, way to go on that. Um, yeah. tell, me, tell me a little bit about uh, the different use cases of how people are using your content, whether it's generative AI or, uh, or, or just your other media assets. There's so many different applications. What are some of the top ones for you guys that you see? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a great question. It's used in so many different ways. So um, at Shutterstock, we have a division called Studios, which is basically um, a custom curated content division. So a lot of people will utilize it and say, listen, you know, I want to make a 15 second, a 30 second spot, or I want to create a custom metaverse environment. Um, this needed to be done yesterday. I don't have a lot of budget. Can you guys take your global network of producers and creators and go out and make that? The answer is always yes. Shutterstock Studios can do that for we also have a content curation team. That's when an agency, a brand, a corporate entity, a media company will come to us and say, hey, I'm, this is my goal. Here's the top line on the creative brief. I, I want I, you know, I want images or videos or things that are similar to this, these categories, and this is what I'm trying to drive towards. I'm trying to drive conversions on Facebook or clicks, whatever it is. We have a team that goes out and sources assets specific to that creative brief. So we do that as well. We also uh, acquired TurboSquid a couple of years ago. That's the world's largest 3D model library. So people will come to us to, you know, um, purchase and enhance 3D models that go into, let's say, their virtual storerooms or showrooms or on their e-commerce sites. And now we have a lot of folks who are starting to use the AI image generator to kind of, you know, fill gaps in imagination and also... Um, you know, give them the ability, like I said before, to kind of spend less time searching, more time creating, right? We're seeing a lot of folks who are using image generation for, I don't know, creative concepting, for cold starting, just to have a mood board, or this is the kind of vibe we're going for. And in a lot of cases, we're finding in two or three generations, which take anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds apiece, they're finding exactly what they need which doesn't even compare if you were to go to, let's say, some of the AI image generators directly, or if you were to go to Google or any of the search engines to, to type in the same term, you're not going to get that quality that you're going to get with our image generator. So number of things I could go on and on. We do, like I said, custom metaverse environments, NFTs. There's obviously the licensing side of our business where we're helping train other people's AI models. We're really, the core of our business is always going to be, um, the content, right? The photography, um, the videos, the vector files, the illustrations, audio, et cetera, and the people who have created that. And what we're just trying to do is build and build and build in a very um, sensible and responsible way on top of that. So we're, we're really turning into a 360 kind of a creative partner in general. We're not just a stock house. We're not just a content provider. Um, we can do that, but we can do a whole lot more as well. Love it. Yeah. And it seems like this hub and spoke kind of model that you have where the content and the creators are at the core, and then you have all these different use cases around that. 
um, and, and service capabilities. When, when people are looking for media to find, um, you mentioned, you just touched on that a little bit, but let's expand on that a little bit more. Tell me a little bit about some of the innovation that you guys are doing to help your customers source the right media that they're looking for, whether it's images or video. Yeah, totally. It's a great question. So certainly the generator play, plays a part in that. You know, it gets them to something that it may be very specific that they can't find otherwise. We're also helping people with what we're calling AI-powered search. So that is taking additional things into consideration when you perform a search. So you may search for a picture of like a cat and a dog, but let's say you want to get more specific. You want a picture of a cat and a dog that is predicted to perform well for, let's say, a social media campaign that's going to be targeted to, I don't know, a tech enthusiast or a CPG type audience. And uh, th this is what your actual goal is. You want to drive clicks, you want to drive conversions, you want to drive awareness. So it's about surfacing assets that make sense based on your goals and objectives. And what we're building towards is giving people the ability to utilize that same technology against non-Shutterstock assets. So you work with another provider, you've custom created something, you've run campaigns on social media for the past six years. Do you want us to go back and help you kind of analyze that creative to look at the visuals that actually drove performance? Uh, th those are a couple different ways that people are utilizing the technology. Another one is something like object detection or just auto tagging. You know, most things we, most providers we work with, we hear, or most clients we work with, we hear like, hey, we have a dam or we have two or three of them, but they're a complete mess. They're not organized properly. So we're helping people identify the objects and photos and tag them. We're helping people identify which assets may perform better based on certain goals, certain audiences, we're helping people organize that way as well. I mean, like th there are so many different things we can do, whereas there certainly is a menu of Shutterstock capabilities. Every conversation I'm a part of has at least one kind of customized or, um, you know, bespoke aspect to it. Nothing is ever exactly the same, which is what keeps the job exciting, honestly. That sounds really interesting. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you get into this position in the company and tell me a little bit about your background and, and when you joined Shutterstock. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll do like the full background. I, uh, I went to FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology here in, um, here in New York city. I went on an interview because I needed to get a job because, you know, whatever I was doing just wasn't going to cut it, you know, needed to pay the rent, needed to buy my, uh, my MTA pass and, uh, put the uh, foot the bar bill and all that stuff, take my girlfriend out at the time. So I went to an interview and they said, hey, this job leads directly to sales. Is that something you're interested in? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, here I am almost 17 years later. Um, I came to Shutterstock directly from a company called LiveRamp, which specializes in identity resolution. Before that, I was at Nielsen for about six years. Prior to that, I was part of a company that got acquired by Nielsen. The reason I joined the team here and I was always traditionally on the sales, the biz dev side of things, mostly in SaaS, ad, and MarTech. Uh, the reason I joined the team here and kind of really liked this role that was more of a subject matter export, kind of ex expert, kind of like a professional brainstormer role, is that I saw a lot of these other tools I had worked on because of privacy regulations, things like GDPR and CCPA, like we have here in the States, uh, kind of changing people's perspectives on how effective these marketing tools or advertising tools were going to be moving forward, like, you know, the advent of the cookie apocalypse. And I started to think about, huh, it'd be really interesting to kind of take a step back and help agencies, brands, media, whoever, create based on what they're actually trying to accomplish and using AI to do an analysis of that creative, that rant. So it's kind of, like I said before, it's kind of like helping with the cold start problem. We don't really know where to start. This is what's been successful in the past. So let's kind of use that as a framework. Or I've made 200 different versions of a creative and we're about to go into A-B testing. A-B testing, you're spending time and money to choose the least worst, right? So wouldn't it be helpful to know out of those 200, which are the top 10 and also the creative intelligence behind it? We recommend running with these 10 to start because this hex code color blue performs really well for your audience. And they also like it when two people are in the photo and there's a car in the background or whatever it is. It could be somebody making eye contact, looking off to the side, could be a sentiment, could be a lack of something. Um, we want to help people identify all those pieces and, um, and get to something that is kind of elemental, which is the visual that drives performance. Right. Um, so, so that's why I got involved and that's why, uh, why we're, we're doing what we're doing and why I'm excited about our direction. Cause it's like that, 
like I said, it's almost that back to basics type approach, right? You can retarget, you can do programmatic, you can do all this stuff. But if you if you retarget a user 40 times with something that isn't visually appealing to them, you're just burning a cycle and they saw 10 other 10,000 other pieces of content today. So what about yours gets them to actually behave how you want them to? We think visual is a great way to chart that. It's a fascinating approach. And I love the data-driven kind of angle on that as well. Tell me, a little, let's drill into that a little bit. I'm, I'm so curious about uh, on the on the customer side, if they're like, let, you're looking at 200 pieces of two content assets that you have, and they're going to A-B test them and you want to apply some data to that. What's the... How do you do that? What is, is that an API driven kind of use case or is that a, a tool set or a team or how do you help the client in that, in that situation? It's a great question. So we are building towards an automated way to do that via API. So just connecting to a person's dam and pulling in or connecting to like an agency DCO server or something like that, pushing the intelligence that way. Um, there is a, an early version of a tool on our platform that people can use for it. But what we've realized is that you know, when we launched Shutterstock AI a couple summers ago, we had acquired a, a number of companies to kind of feed into this larger piece that we're building on top of Shutterstock. And we've slowly started to realize that those tools are really good and were great the way they were. So we're kind of almost taking a step back now and approaching on a one-on-one -on -one customized basis with certain clients who want to take advantage of it and who are also willing to, let's say, connect a Facebook or an Instagram account to get the data. We're saying, hey, you know, we'll give you an analysis of your creative and we'll help you kind of walk into the next project with data, confidence, uh, data to back up whatever creative decision you're making. And really all we're asking for is feedback and, uh, the, you know, kind of usability, how useful it is, and also some context around like, would you guys be willing to pay for this service? Um, you know, how much is that? Is it a SaaS model? Is it an individual? Is it a POM model? Like, we're not really sure how that's going to work. So the short answer is that we're kind of going back to basics. We're going back to the original technologies that were acquired and we're giving people the ability to take advantage of those. And then we're going to eventually utilize that to build towards what is going to become the automated tool as well as the tool that is predominant on the, uh, on the platform. Very cool. Very cool. And as you're saying all of this, I'm thinking about, you know, what's the user experience to be able to tap into all this innovation? Do you, are you guys creating like a innovation area on the website or a sandbox or some sort of way for people to start to tap into all this innovation that you guys are developing? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. You, you know, it's a, it, there's an upside and a downside to being a very acquisitory company or acquisitive, I guess. Um, we, you know, you have all these tools, they, they, these things you can tap into, this knowledge base, like people from TurboSquid and Shutterstock and Pond5 is now part of Shutterstock. So just to be able to tap into those guys and talk to them about their businesses is really fascinating. Um, the short answer is we're figuring it out, right? Because we have like, I don't want to say like the, the Frankenstein's monster, but we have all these pieces that we're figuring out how to tie together. And part of going back to the basics, like I was saying before, is about understanding what's really useful, what can be stripped here, and what do we want to keep moving forward? So the short answer is they're not really unified right now. That's why everything is more or less on a one-by-one -one basis with these custom projects. But we're aiming towards having a a very unified, direct, kind of an enterprise platform experience for our clients in the near future. It would probably be as opposed to a bunch of different apps. It would just be one platform. So you go through, you search, you source your assets, you add them to a collection or a light box. You decide if you want to edit them before you purchase them, um, et cetera, et cetera. So th there's going to be a number of different options, but we're working on kind of like a consistent creative work. Also, we want to not force people into that. We want people to be able to take advantage of the tools and the capabilities on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well. So not be married to like a whole creative process if they don't wish to be. Very exciting. And, and you're such at the tip of the spear for the company. If, if you forecast out, I guess my last question here for you is if, if you forecast out a year from now, what would you like to be celebrating? Uh, you, you know, uh, it's a it's a great question. I would like to be celebrating kind of whatever version 10 is of our AI image generator because we're only on version one right now. Um, I'm excited to celebrate um, other data deals and companies where we've helped train their models and kind of spreading the good word about, you know, like ethically sourced, um, artist centric content going in to train these models. And also I'm really, I'm really excited to see other companies 
take our approach or at least start to share that mentality that the creators, the photographers, the artists, the illustrators, the, if the if the foundation of this stuff is going to be built on their work, they should be recognized and compensated for it. And that's something we're not seeing right now, but that's why we're doing it. We think there's a way to sit at the table and also have influence as opposed to just walking away from the table, which some people have done, or just kind of sitting back with our arms crossed. I feel like you, you, you kind of have to, uh, you, you have to put in if you want to get something out of it, like everything else. Well, congratulations to the success you've had so far. And it's really exciting to hear what's, what's coming up for Shutterstock. So thank you, Michael. This has been a, a very interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. I look forward to uh, connecting more in the future. Yeah, my pleasure. Michael Franchello from Shutterstock. Thank you very much. Thank you.